1996, maybe seven, when I had the vision of being in the river of life with Jesus. It was one of, of course it was, but it was, it was one of the most profound experiences. It was very real. It, it, was more than, it was more than just seeing something. I was living it. Does that make sense? I was, well, I don't know what you call that, but I was experiencing a, a vision. So I was in the river with Jesus. He was not, he was not acting the way I expected he would act if I ever had an encounter with Jesus. He was laughing. He was having fun in the river. Nothing religious about it. There was nothing somber about it. There was nothing reverent about it. There was nothing inappropriate. It was just he was having fun. I remember when the when I came out of this vision, thinking, I don't think in my entire life I have ever pictured God having fun, laughing, carrying on, cutting up. Toward the end of the vision, he and I we went around the world in this vision, and toward the end, we came back to where we, to a place, and we ended up on a beach, and he had uh, orchestrated uh, having Cece and my two daughters join us there on the beach, and we had been going to different parts of the world, uh, uh, preaching, and get, I'll tell you about it in a minute, getting people in the river. But when we stopped, he said, I said, what are we doing here? And what, what? he said, it's your birthday. We're going to celebrate your birthday. And I said, we can't stop and celebrate. There's, there are other parts of the world we have to go to and evangelize and heal these people. He said, oh, I got other people doing that too. You know, they'll take care of it. Today, you just need to chill, man. So he brought out a cake. And I said, well, okay, you know, cut the cake, he said cut the cake. We're not going to cut the cake. He started pulling off chunks of it and giving it to us. And we had to eat it with our hands. He was laughing and had it all in his beard. And he said, that's the problem. One of the problems with you Dutch, you just always want to cut the cake so neatly. And so is it. he said, sometimes you just need to pull pieces off and just eat it. But when I first in the river, he he held me under and, and he dunked me, held me under until I swallowed it. And I and I knew he was playing with me, but I didn't expect him to hold me under that long. <laughs> Finally, I didn't have any choice, and it was like just life permeated every cell of my body when I drank or inhaled the river. You couldn't drown in this river. And then he said, let's go to other parts of the world in the river. And instantly the river went from waist deep to deep rushing and swept us away. And we ended up in, a, in the river in another part of the country on, a bank, on, the, on the bank of the river were people from that area looking at us. And I was waiting for Jesus to um, do something. And he said, Tell him, preach the gospel to him. Well, I'm thinking, I said, I'm not going to preach in front of you. I 
I mean, I know we are anyway, but doesn't he, what if he was standing here in the flesh and you had to preach? I'd be saying, no, you preach. You preach. You're the teacher. You're the word. You preach. I want to listen. He said, they can't see me. They only see you. I'll be right here helping you. So I preached the gospel. And they were a little timid. They didn't know whether to accept it or not. And he said, if you'll splash them and put some of this water on them, they'll want it. I said, really? He said, so I started flinging this water up on the bank. And the people would touch. When it hit them, they were just overwhelmed. And what do you think they did? Jumped in the river. They wanted to be in this water when they tasted it, when it touched them. So I think we're coming to a point in time where God is he's trying to get us to a place where we say, what does he want to do with me tonight? Maybe, maybe it's just to worship and, and connect in a way that releases my faith uh, to where all the faith in the room is all, is all becoming one faith river. To where by the time there's such agreement now and there's such a, a heart to release this artesian well, this flowing river, there's such a unity and there's such a faith that anybody that comes in the room has to get healed. Because everything lives, that word is Rafa, everything lives where the river goes. And then when they can't get in the room, we move it out to the parking lot. And they can't, and there's so many people being touched by God, they can't get, they can't get to the front to be ministered to her, or they can't get cleared to the, you know, the person praying. But it says Peter, you know, his shadow was healing him. And that wasn't his shadow healing. That was episkiazo. That was the overshadowing. It's a word that means Holy Spirit is enveloping that atmosphere. He's enveloping the people in an atmosphere of his glory and power. That's what the word means. It's the word transfiguration. It's the word overshadowing Mary so that she became pregnant with Jesus. It's the same word. So I'm going to say to you that we need to get our faith out there and ask the Lord to show us how to cooperate with him and one another in such a way that when we get together, the river goes to an entirely new level and everything lives where the river goes. And when, the, when you move in this level of anointing, you begin to move in a level of faith that is so strong and so secure, you can be captured and be in chains on a boat and know that actually you're in charge. And that sooner or later, God's going to exalt you on that ship to where they're going to be coming to you for advice. What do we do? And if you happen to end up on an island, revival will come to the island. This, the things I'm saying could sound sensationalistic, but we need to remember that this is what happened in the book of Acts. This is not something I'm making up trying to hype you into some sort of excited frenzy. This is what happened in the early church. And if we're going to go from glory to glory, if we're going to go from faith to faith, if his kingdom is supposed to increase and increase and increase and increase, and we're supposed to move to higher and higher and higher levels, then we need to at least be doing what they were doing, but we should be doing more. <laughs> 